Hi friends. Somebody asked me the other day, what's that on your shoulder? Is that a chip? I said, no, it's my seat belt. <laughs> Somebody else also pointed out that I'm generally in a pretty good, happy mood. Well, thank you for noticing. That's absolutely true. Hey, last night, we do this thing with the campfire. We call it uh, making a chimney. If you take a cardboard box and open it up and set it on the campfire, and then the, the air and the flames go whooshing up through it. Well, uh, Tricia bought a bicycle, and uh, we decided to tape it together and make a really big chimney. So we did that, and uh, before I got my camera turned on, it was going real well. The flames were shooting about probably 10, 12 feet up in the air, and then it fell down just as I got my camera on. And uh, fortunately, no one was injured in the making of this video, but it, it was close. <laughs> Holy moly! And you're the sober one. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Trish. <laughs> so, what you need now is a tomato steak. Yeah. You know the tomato baskets? Right. You need those to burn your chimneys. Okay, well, we got one more. <laughs> that was the big one. We should have practiced with the little one. Okay, this is another chimney. I have no problem there. Whoa! And you can see why stairwells just don't let it go. Way hot. Just let it go, Jack. Just let it go, Jack. White men build big fires, stand way back. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Yeah, I probably wouldn't wear that. So. Okay, I just turned the camera on. Please talk about something interesting. <laughs> this drink you made me is really good. Oh, wait, you weren't in the film. What? <laughs> this drink you made me is really good. Oh, okay. Rum and See? And Sprite. Here we go. And cheers. And and cheers. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Oh, and look at Caravan Carolyn. No alcohol. No alcohol. Hey, Not no alcohol. Hand, anyway. <laughs> okay. And this is Trish and the Jovi. famous dog, digging dog. Jovi. Jovi. So. Uh, Lynn always tries to tell everybody her birthday is every month so she can get presents. Jovi. Oh, knows her name? Yep. How old is Jovi? Getting close to four months. Yeah. Wow. I pro I didn't know my name when I was four months old. Yeah, Me right. neither. <laughs> Ron, you weren't in the picture. That's why I came over here. Ah! I, just, I just called my friend about the nest, and he says he thinks it's a desert wren, which might even be the state bird of Arizona. Whoa! We have... And he said the gestation period is only like a couple weeks on those eggs, so if we check back, we might see some hatchlings Baby. in there. Perfect. All right. Cool. Well, thank you for that report. That's going to her chair, or to her car. You wouldn't stop, even after I asked. Several times. And I moved. And she moved right beside me. She's like, I can't believe that hurts. And I'm just going, <laughs> what part of you don't understand? What part of I've got broken, broken bones in Somebody's valentine got yellow roses. I'm the valentine. Are those Texas roses? Those are yellow roses of Texas. 
They're just for little Lynn. Were you wanting to perform? What? Were you wanting to perform? No. I'm going to shut the camera off, and then I'm going to put up the shade so you have more light. And then you're going to sing for me. No, I'm not. Because everybody in my videos keeps asking in the comments, Where's Lynn? Where's Lynn? Where's Lynn? Uh, here I am. Wait, i got to put the... No, it's too dark. I have to put the shade up. No. Hang on. No. I'm coloring a pink and purple owl. You're coloring a what? Pink and purple owl. And I can't be bothered. Owls are not pink and purple. They're and like this, they're like brown and brown. Well, this would be a real boring book if every owl was brown. Let's see what you're doing. Not too close now. It's still wet. Pink and <laughs> pink. Whoops! I dropped the camera. Pink and purple owl. Yep. This is going to be uh, very entertaining. Washing me coloring? Come on, do something entertaining. <laughs> huh? You know, you're going to get your own vlogger puppet. No, I'm not. Yeah, you're going to get a vlogger puppet. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. I'm not either. Yeah, and it's going to go like... I'm coloring for content. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm thinking about it, there's something I've been wanting to talk about. And it's not enough to make a video of it. But it's something that I would like other RVers to know about. I've done this in all my RVs, including my boat, you have a 12 volt water pump and it cycles every time you turn on the switch. I fixed that problem by putting in a pressure tank. And it doesn't matter where it is in the system beyond the water pump, that's a tank, uh, about two gallons, and it has a bladder in it. And I put about 15 pounds of air pressure in it. It's got a, a, a valve on the other end of it for a regular, uh, like a tire valve. And what that does is it keeps the water pump from cycling. I can flush the toilet three times before the water pump comes on. And I started that in my old south wind because the water pump was underneath the bed. And Lynn would get up in the middle of the night, go to the bathroom, flush the toilet, and the water pump would shake my pillow. Uh, my hummingbird feeder, the wind blew yesterday and it fell down and broke the ring off the top of it. So I've set it up there on top of the car because it can no longer hang. I don't think the hummingbirds like it too much. Good morning, friends. What is it about morning coffee? <laughs> I got a question about how's my solar working. Uh, last October, I put some additional solar on the roof of my RV. And uh, I thought maybe I'd just take you through a solar day. First of all, how is it working? It's working very well. And here's how I manage it. Um, I'm producing, and I have a Victron uh, 50 amp um, solar charger. It Bluetooths to my phone. So here I have um, a record of how many uh, kilowatts I'm producing. So on this day, I did uh, 1.5 
kilowatts. This day I did 2.14 kilowatts. That's uh, three to 400 watts of charging when the sun is full up in the sky. And I have uh, four Full River AGM batteries, which are 250 amp hour, six volts each. So I've got um, 500 amps at 12 volts, of which 250 would be usable if you didn't discharge them more than 50%. So here's how I manage a solar day. Um, if I don't run the generator, uh, my batteries are charged by 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning if it's a sunny day. And um, I could make coffee with my electric coffee pot off of the solar. If I wait until the sun is high in the sky, I can cook uh, that afternoon's dinner in a, an Instapot or a slow cooker with solar um, by running my inverter. I have a 3000 watt inverter. But here's how I manage the whole day. First of all, when I make coffee in the morning, I run the generator. I have a 7.5 uh, kilowatt uh, diesel generator. And the reason that I do that is because although I can uh, make coffee with the electric coffee pot, uh, with the batteries and the inverter and the solar will recharge it. Solar is very good at absorption and float charging. Generators are very bad at that. My generator has the capacity, a, a great capacity beyond charging of the batteries. But generators are very good at bulk charging. So when I start um, my generator, I could be throwing 150 amps into my batteries. Uh, that'll last for just a little bit, and it's bulk charging, and that's fine. When it gets to absorption, the uh, charger will cut it down to about 30 amps, and there is no efficiency in running a generator that can produce 7,500 watts using 30 amps at 12 volts is 360 watts. You're using 5% of the capacity of the generator, so it's very inefficient. So I run the generator and make coffee in order not to deplete the batteries past uh, the absorption. And that gives the generator uh, the opportunity to do the bulk charging and then the solar does the absorption and float. So that's what I do in the morning. And whatever I do all day, the uh, solar, and I have 600 watts of solar up there. I actually have 700, but I'll tell you why I say 600 in a moment. And if we uh, do whatever we do, if, I'm happy, if I happen to be going to cook something in a convection microwave, I would certainly turn on the generator because convection microwave takes about 150 uh, amps to run it. So I will use the generator if I'm making a pizza or baking cookies or whatever, that's generator. Again, I could do it with solar, but it will deplete the batteries. And why deplete the batteries? Especially if it's late in the afternoon and the solar isn't going to pick up the difference. And so if I'm doing something that requires a lot of uh, amperage, I will run the generator to do that also. Then we'll watch TV in the evenings, and uh, when we're out here in the uh, BLM, Bureau of Land Management areas, where there is a rule that generators are not run past 10 o'clock at night, I will always run the generator between 9.30 and 10 o'clock, in order to put some charge in the batteries before we go to bed. And that's necessary because um, it wouldn't be necessary and it wasn't necessary in our old south wind. But uh, a 40 foot diesel pusher has a lot of uh, parasitic loads that need to be taken care of and we do run a diesel 
furnace overnight and uh, the refrigerator needs 12 volt power even though it's running on gas and <laughs> the ice maker uh, needs some 12 volt power when it's heating up the trays to dump the ice. So there are a lot of things that uh, will deplete the batteries overnight and we have plenty of battery and we have plenty of capacity to recharge them the next day but I like to have them not go below 12.2 volts and uh, throwing that charge into them with the uh, diesel generator between 9.30 and 10 o'clock at night makes everything work perfectly the next morning. I do have a question and I've asked a lot of people this question both online and in person uh, people who should know the answer. And I get different answers, which leads me to believe that some of the answers are not correct. Perhaps some of them are, but if you get a yes qu answer to a question and a no answer to a question, one of them has to be wrong. So here's the question. And this is why I say I have 600 watts instead of 700. My RV came with a 100 watt panel and it's designed to take care of the parasitic loads when it's in storage. Uh, An Allison transmission has a computer memory in it so if the coach is stored for months the transmission needs some electricity. And there are a number of other things like that, uh, you know, the sensors for CO2 and whatever. Anyway, uh, it came with a 100 watt panel and I have added uh, four 150 watt panels for a total of 600 additional panels and I have a different uh, MPPT charge controller for those panels. I isolated the 100 watt panel so that it only charges the engine battery, not the coach batteries or the house batteries. Why did I do that? I did that because here's the question. If you have more than one charge controller, and I do, I have the old original charge controller and the new MPPT charge controller, charge controllers begin to limit the charge by sensing the voltage in the battery. If one charge controller is sending 14.2 volts to the battery, does the other charge controller sense that voltage and begin to limit itself? I know people who have two or three charge controllers and they were sold the two or three charge controllers because people said, well, it's a redundancy. So if you have uh, one panel shaded, then it's better to have more charge controllers. There's the question. Do charge controllers sense the charge sent by the other charge controller and therefore limit what they produce or send to the batteries? I've had a lot of people say, no, absolutely that doesn't happen. The electronics and the brain in there, the computer doesn't let that happen. I believe it does. That's what I believe, but I'm not sure. What do you think? I've done a test that seems to support my opinion. I looked on my phone to see how many watts and how many amps I'm getting out of my solar and being put into my batteries and standing there watching it I start the generator. The solar was putting 26 amps into the batteries. As soon as the generator started which charges the batteries it dropped to 15 amps. It hovered there for a moment, then it went to 18 amps and seemed to be steady. Then I shut the generator off and the amperage from the solar returned to 24 amps. What happened? The solar charger sensed the electricity or the amperage or the voltage 
coming from the generator and began to limit what it was delivering. Wouldn't the same thing happen if you have more than one charge controller? Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.